This is Byron Lazine and Nicole White, and you are tuned into episode 268 of The Real Word. Word is up. All right, a lot of good stuff to cover. We're going to get into Zillow, and we're going to get into some property taxes, but you want to stick around for the third racket where I react to a personal phone call with Inman. Now, I wasn't able to record this. Didn't even think to record it, Nicole. Nope. I wouldn't do that. I think no, that's well, illegal. I think if they give you a heads up on what the topic was, maybe you would have considered it. But <laughs> Listen, uh, we're going to react to it. We'll get into it all uh, as well as a reaction. Yes. Uh, to, there's two parts I'm just glad that I thing. had – I actually had zero to do with it. My name of was course. brought up. None oh, of my, no. No, your name was The up, one you're right. real word that I didn't do got yeah, brought yeah. up. So – all right, so we've got an inman reaction at the end, but first, Zillow now allows home buyers to search based on monthly payments. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is going to be a big move, in my opinion, yep. for Zillow to relate to the home buyer at a more intimate level. This is actually what they are most concerned about when they are searching for homes. Can they afford the monthly payment? Right. With Zillow's newest feature now available on the Zillow app, and coming soon to Zillow.com, buyers looking for homes can now search based on monthly payments. The new filter uses up-to-date information on mortgage rates and housing prices to calculate monthly housing costs and suggest affordable options. Let's go and just share the screenshot. This is a NowBAM.com article. You can get that article, of course, for free. There's free. no paywall on that no article. Paywall. We'll, we'll link it down below and you can read all about this, but let's show the screenshot that's embedded in the article that shows um, how you're going to be able to search or how a home shopper will be able to search. So yep. you can go for sale, for rent, recently sold. So to the left, we've got for sale checked off. Yep. And then pricing range, you can search by listing price or- Monthly payment. Monthly payment, okay? So um, the price, you can, you can you know, you know do the- price per month, a hundred thousand yep. or less per month. I think most people will be less than that, right? We, we don't, not everybody's gonna be searching a hundred thousand a month. No, not many. Okay, so, not many. so maybe 2000 a month, something like that. Right. And see what, what what's available. So this estimate will include principal and interest, Yep. as well as mortgage insurance, property taxes, home insurance, and HOA fees. So mm -hmm. they're gonna give you that true estimate, Nicole, not just because principal and interest would be super misleading if you didn't include right. what the total payment will. Well, especially taxes. I mean, taxes could, in some situations, jack it up. You know, five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars for sure. Could it? And yeah. we're going to talk about taxes in the in the second racket. Yep. Um, and and absolutely could. Okay. And so then you could put in your down payment, and, and then uh, you can see all the results in your market that actually w will reflect what you can afford. Okay, how many homes are there available that I can afford as opposed to window shopping right. as a home shopper and hoping that uh, something will you know, fall into your price category and then I got to figure out the payment. You know, This shows you if you can afford the payment immediately. Mm -hmm. And it's how, I mean, it's how most people will shop for a car yeah. online. Yep. It's more about the monthly payment. Well, I mean, it's it's honestly, I, I feel like if you're if you're working with a pretty good agent, that's how you're sort of shopping for a house already. So, um, I think that this will alleviate certainly uh, buyers looking at the wrong price point right off the bat. I think that again, they're doing a lot of their shopping on Zillow originally. Um, so this here will certainly put them in the correct direction and really have them understand what a $500,000 house really costs them per month. It's why on the hot sheet every single morning, I'm like, got to know the up to the minute information on yeah. what's happening with mortgages. Because last week on Wednesday, the national average for the 30 year fixed rate was 6.16. Yesterday it came in at six and a half. So all the good momentum we had yesterday got, or uh, last week rather, yeah. got completely wiped out with yesterday's reading at six and a half, the 10 years up today as we're recording this and six and a half on Tuesday of April 11th, which is today, it could be up again. 
And so w- without knowing exactly day to day where your buyers are going to fit, right. because until they're locked in, it doesn't locked matter in. what the rate is. Right. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And again, though, I mean, it, 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 I, I think where it's important too are the people that were maybe looking last year and now they're looking this year or they looked two years ago, or if they're looking to sell their house and buy now, I mean, what a great resource for them too, to really figure out if it's worth selling or if they do sell what they're then going to be up against for, for pricing. I think it's genius. I'm actually surprised that it hasn't happened sooner. Um, it's the only way that I have my buyer shop, my, my mortgage people that I work with, they hate me because again, before we put in any offer, I always give the information so that my clients know what their monthly expense will be. It's never about a purchase price. It's always about what they can afford. So again, I'm a little surprised that it took Zillow this long, but I am like thrilled that they're finally like on the right track here, um, with really setting up again, our, our agents for success too. Cause obviously in the end, these leads are being transferred over to agents that are then having to potentially, you know, um, like paddle upstream because they think that they can afford 500 when really all they want to pay is like 300. So I think it's great. A couple of reasons why this is so smart of Zillow to implement into their app and then coming soon on Zillow.com, these monthly mortgage payments or the ability for a home shopper to search for them. Uh, certainly, number one, I, I think it, it it builds more trust in the brand with home sure. shoppers, of course, because <clears throat> they're being educated in real time as that interest rate moves day to day. They're seeing updates on what's available in the market. Mm-hmm per their budget for what they can afford. And here's number two, Nicole. Um, Listen, they're trying to build Zillow home loans. And so by showing that monthly payment and then maybe the opportunity with Zillow home loans, maybe to buy down a point, whatever, you know, they're going to be able to market directly to these home shoppers that are searching for the monthly payment. Okay. If you're searching monthly payment mortgage, I know you're not a cash buyer now. I've got that data. What does Zillow always have? They got more data than anybody. More data. I've got that data and now I can market to you with Zillow home loans. Right. I think Zillow stock is a buy right now because of these types of moves that they're making. They're they're basically just trying to take market share from three to six percent nationally and just think about the spread of the opportunity with the home loans that they're going to be able to grow. Uh this is this is a move in that direction. The monthly payment um have nearly doubled since 2020. So the timing is right for right. this. Yep. The home buyers that are in the market are, are very uh, conscious of what's going on and, and they need to have this information. And if, and if uh, agents aren't providing it, what, what has always happened over the last couple of decades, if agents won't do it, guess who will? Zillow, Zillow will, will for sure. And yep. so they've done it once again, smart move by Zillow, certainly not a Genius. racket. I think- nope. I think home shoppers will love the new feature. What homeowners won't love, Nicole, is property taxes that are up across the U.S. This will be another affordable uh, issue for, I think, home buyers in the short term. I think in the long term, this could create more inventory. Uh, But here's the new Adam report. It shows that property taxes are up 3.6% across the U.S., rising $328 billion in 2021 to 339.8 billion in 2022. Let's just go through the states with the highest effective property tax rates in 2022. Nicole, New Jersey's number one, Illinois, number two, Connecticut, number three, Vermont, Nebraska, Pennsylvania, New Hampshire, Ohio, New York, and Iowa. So those are the top 10 with the highest effective tax rates. States with the lowest effective property tax rates would be Hawaii, Alabama, Arizona, Colorado, Tennessee, Utah, Nevada, Idaho, South Carolina, and West Virginia. Now let's go to the averages. Okay. So the high, so that was effective tax rate. Now yep. we're talking about average costs. So the dollars, I'll read yep. off the dollars here. The Northeast had seven of the 10 states with the highest average property taxes in 2022. So Jersey, again, top of the list. Over $9,500, it's more than 10 times the average property tax in the state with the lowest, which is West Virginia. We'll get to the lows in a second. Connecticut, number two, $7,600 plus. Massachusetts, just over Mm 7,000. New Hampshire, almost 7,000. And New York, almost $6,700. The the, uh, 10 states with the lowest property taxes were all in the South. The top five, West Virginia. I don't consider West Virginia the South, but there you go. West Virginia, Alabama, Arkansas, Louisiana, and Mississippi. Mississippi coming in at number five at $1,300. 
West Virginia at number one was $928. Hey, West Virginia, I said this on the hot sheet this morning because I covered this a little bit and teased it for the real world. Okay. West Virginia, that was my monthly payment on the house that you sold for me in Connecticut last year. That was my monthly tax payment. Yes. $928. Bucks. <laughs> I actually think it probably was more than that. No? That's just about that. I mean, for yeah. a two bedroom. Yeah. I mean, it was maybe it was maybe a thousand bucks or whatever. Well, but so then plus your HOA was, a, was and then nearly my HOA the was, it was nearly the same. Yeah. So yeah. so and that was a two bedroom. So we're in the northeast where you I have think seven. I think it was a little I, I think it was actually more. I think it was more than that per I know. month. I know. Yeah. But luckily I've sold that property. I it's went to gone. the lowest tax town in Connecticut for that yes. investment property. But the, so the northeast seven of the ten states with the highest average property taxes. And they're going to continue to grow. We and this is what we talked about it recently in the real world. This is going to be something that will get. I was ahead of that curve, saying, "Okay, I see where this is going. The property value rose forty plus percent, right? And I've only got a two bedroom here, and taxes are only going to go up. And I don't right. use the schools, yes, and so on and so forth. So let me go and move this Let's money somewhere here. else, which yep. created an opportunity of inventory onto the market. So I think in the Northeast, where inventory is tight. These increases that are going to that happened in 22 and I think are going to be bigger in 2023. Yeah. Places like Jersey, Connecticut, Mass, New Hampshire, New York, which make up the top five. I, I think you'll see more inventory as these taxes, property taxes increase in 23. Well, I think what, again, I, I'm curious to see what will happen too, especially with like those waterfront properties. You know, there's a lot of families that have had these properties forever. You know, they've been handed down generation to generation. It's always seems to be the taxes that that seem to push people over the edge too. So it'll be interesting to see what happens to, you know, like the, again, the, the waterfront areas up here in the Northeast and, and what, what families can actually, you know, what is their breaking point there too? As boomers continue to retire, yep, and the South has these, you know, these lower property taxes, and then there's states in the South uh, like a Texas, which does have high property taxes, although they're not in the top ten, or a Florida, which don't have any state income, and you can get a, basically a raise on your retirement. You may uh, continue to see a migration out of the Northeast, out of the Midwest, where you do have high property taxes, and down into these southern states northeast and the midwest metros are the highest effective uh tax rates mostly because of illinois when they talk about the midwest but rochester new york trenton new jersey rockford illinois peroya illinois and atlantic city are the top five metros imagine that um atlantic city you know be paying their uh, paying taxes a high tax rate in Atlanta seems psychotic uh so here nicole are the top five metros with populations of at least 1 million. Okay. So Rochester is in there. Yep. Um, and then you have Hartford, Connecticut, Chicago, Cleveland, and New York. So we know that Hartford doesn't have a million, but the Metro, the Hartford County makes up a million people and they're at the top of the list. So, right. uh, crazy to, to, to see some of these, some of these areas and listen, Hartford, um, Hartford public, like we know Hartford, Hartford public schools, and to be having the highest effective tax rate with those public schools. I know everybody in the Northeast wants to toot their horn that they got great public schools, but Hartford ain't it. No, Hartford's not it. Are you talking about Hartford as the city or Hartford? I'm talking about the, the city, not the county. Okay, not I was like, let's take a deep breath. There's some I'm really not talking great about the surrounding counties. There's some really great towns that you're clumping in there. Yeah, no, but I'm talking about the city, right? Taxes in the city are high. These are well, these are problem high. Yeah. Well, higher but, crime. But it, what's so interesting though is again, like, but I, I, we're really talking about Connecticut here. But like, you run into places like Hamden for a three hundred thousand dollar house in Hamden, your taxes are thirteen, fourteen thousand dollars. I mean, it's like it it's almost more money in taxes per month than than your mo actual mortgage payment. So. Nicole, think about the top the top four city or three of these five cities: Rochester. Let's put Rochester and Cleveland aside, but New York, Chicago, and Hartford. Yeah. Uh, is, is crime a positive or a negative in those three places? Well, I, I mean, I, yes. I mean, it's it's certainly something to take into consideration. Oh, I think yeah. a lot of people in leaving Chicago and New York are taking into consideration. Yes. Um, and then you've got high, high taxes. What is it? What is the tax money going to? And then you have schools in a lot of these cities. You go to the suburbs. Sure, schools are a different story, but when you're yeah. in the city, so where where's the tax money going? 
you know, that's what's crazy about this. And so I, I think certainly in places like New York, Chicago, you're going to continue to see an exodus uh, Two places in the South where people can um, have a lower tax rate. Aside from Honolulu, the top five metros with populations of at least 1 million and the lowest effective tax rate. And Honolulu has high sales tax. Okay, so let's not be well. I think just their, co their not cost cheap of to live. goods is is more for yes, sure. Yeah, it's not cheap to live there. But let's look at no. the mainland here. And so four of the top five, and these would be places that retirees are going, would be Phoenix, yep. Nashville, Las Vegas, and Salt Lake City, for sure, Utah. Phoenix. Okay, yep. I, th I think you'll continue to see that trend. A trend that I hope, um, or a trend that you you definitely should get on. And this is in relation to our Inman racket that we're about to talk about. Yeah, you can't wait. Uh, would be going into the description down below and checking out the BAM offerings. One of the best offerings we have right now is on Cinco de Mayo, Nicole. That's May. I saw it. I was looking at it. We get to play some golf. That's we right. Get to cocktail, a little. Uh, you have a really long lunch. You're offering a two a two hour lunch. Well, that that includes you're going to warm up and play some golf in that two hour lunch. So, okay. Bam Mastermind. It's a, it's a ticket to an exclusive all day Mastermind golf event. We're calling it the Bam Masters, and it's a it is truly all day on May fifth. So, myself, you the love Cinco agent, de Mayo too. None of this surprises me. I love that weekend. One of my favorite yeah. weekends, you know, Kentucky Derby's the next yep. day. It's on that yep. Saturday. So myself, the broke agent, Ken Pozak, Dan O'Neill, and Bobby, Bam's producer, are going to be putting on the mastermind. Ken Pozak has built a YouTube channel in his local market of Orlando with 36,000 subscribers. It's the best local YouTube channel in the game. Dan O'Neill and broke agent are going to be doing Instagram audits. You're going to walk away with a play-by-play -play plan for you personally for your Instagram, for your YouTube, and also how to video edit all of that content. Be able to ask me any question you want. So we're going to be able to spend all day together. Eight to 12 is the mastermind. 12 to two is the lunch and the warm up for the golf, which starts at 2 p.m. at the Ritz Carlton Tiburon. And then after golf, we will do drinks on the patio at so the Ritz. So when each of you guys takes three people with you, so they get a little one on one time with you too? Yeah. And then yeah. we're going to kind of rotate around. So love it. Really fun experience here in Naples. Make sure you click the link down below if you want to be a part of that. Inman. And I will say, wait, because you, because I've played golf with you before, and I don't play golf. So for oh, anyone rode, out there, you rode. I ride. I make. I do. I do. Yeah. I, I make the. I make a snack platter. Sometimes I'll putt at the very end. So if you don't play golf, I. I you don't worry. Byron will not yell at you. He'll allow you to yep. play with him. Listen, so, the the golf I, is an excuse to yes to hang out more, to ask more questions, to go deeper on some of the information. There's some stuff that we're not even promoting that we're going to pack into this. Some, some really cool stuff that, um, you're going to get a, I can't even say it cause it's not out yet, but you're right. going to get some, some access to some stuff that's not even out yet for BAM that we're not even promoting. But yeah, in the afternoon, if you don't golf, you can just ride and just chill ride. and we can talk business. That's yep. the great thing about golf. There's just plenty of time to talk. Tons of time. So hit the link down below. Uh, to join the mastermind on and it May it sounds like 5th. it'll be pretty warm. You'll get a little ass sweat there too. So dress accordingly. If you're a sweaty person, you may get mm -hmm. some. It's a pretty sweaty spot. Some of what Nicole just mentioned. Yeah. Hit the link below. And uh, now we're on to the biggest racket of the day, the Inman phone call and Inman reaction, a piece to an Inman article reaction. It's really a two-parter here. So Two-parter. Inman, d Nicole, doesn't want to publish the real word ever again because of wait wait that's not what they're saying they're saying that they can't no it, no th they're no, well, never they doing it ever again okay so inman could Let's tell the truth now inman could publish our content but said if, that they no longer want to yes it's not a can to. or can't they can do whatever they want yeah no longer want to yes. uh because of promotional products like the one I just did. Now they were referring to BAM eBooks. Now we'll, we'll have an eBook link down below for you as well. If you want to grab one, the BAM eBook that we'll link down below will be video gear for every budget. These eBooks and actually maybe just put the landing page for all our eBooks down below. Haley, the, the eBooks that we give out are hundred percent free, just like right. our articles. There's no paywall. It's not like a paywall behind a paywall behind a paywall right. behind a paywall. Like I'm some still paywalled do. out, so I need to get back in. Yeah. And so all of the ebooks are completely free. By the way, they're the best free resources in the entire real estate industry because BAM cares about enriching 
the lives of real estate agents. We want agents to be better. We want them to have these resources to up their game. So that's why we create all of these eBooks. Uh, we've done a whole bunch of them and we'll, we'll link those down below. So in the call with, I won't say who, because I highly respect the individual from Inman that I spoke to. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, this person's been there a long time. This person is, uh, in my opinion, a brilliant employee of Inman. Okay. This person asked me to stop uh, talking about the free resources that we give out at BAM because uh, in order to get an ebook, you put an email opt in there. I said, well, if anything, we're only going to engage the audience more. Like this week, we're going to be offering this mastermind, which isn't like a, which isn't like a connect conference where you just get panel pontificated yeah. the entire oh, well, you time. You have only 12 slots. I mean, this is highly exclusive. This is very exclusive. It's 12 people where actually you walk away and your business gets built during that time. It's not like, you know, a bunch of softball questions on a panel where you walk away right. and like, what just happened to me? Okay. Th this is, this is going deep onto your business. So, um, if you've been accustomed to this, this obviously won't get published after this, uh, segment, of course, Clearly. and they already said they're not going to publish just based on, um, but, you know, some of these banned promotions. So yep. if you're used to seeing it, make sure you subscribe to this channel. Uh, because this is where you're going to find the real word and, and the rest of BAM's great content. And listen. It sounds I, like we're not going to get nominated then for the Inman Innovators probably we, then. We've been an Inman Inv Innovator twice. We've been in the finalist twice. And so, uh, but that should be a public. Here's the thing. You should give people what they want. And people want to have these debates and these stories and these crossovers. And so not linking out to. Uh, great contributors, which Inman has historically done, I think is playing a really old game. Having a paywall inside of a paywall for written word is a really old game. It's what got them here, but will it get you there over the next 20 years? If you look at these disruptor media companies across the country, they're, they have an open platform. They're willing to talk about everybody and they're willing to basically promote everybody. And so that leads me to the second piece of the phone call um, where uh, this person from Inman brought up, hey, are you mad at Rachel who wrote Bare Minimum Monday last week, which we covered here on The Real Word? Right. Um, and are you mad at Inman? You said it was the worst published piece. Listen, I can have an opinion on what I think is a great article or a great piece of content and not. And so, you know, Inman or any other media company that just expects everybody to gaslight them and be like, oh, they just everything they write is great. Every piece is is award winning is foolish. It's it's eighth place trophy mindset. It's what's wrong with uh, the mindset of today where and it's what's wrong with this stuffy industry where you just have to gaslight Inman because they, they want you to or anybody else. OK, so. So. Rachel Light, I'm going to be reaching out to you, Rachel. I, I talked about this a little bit on Knowledge Brokers Podcast on Friday because Lisa Chinati, who filled in for Nicole. Uh, the one day I was out. We covered yeah. one of Rachel's articles on In Minute Peace um, last week. Oh, no. Uh, when Nicole was it out was two, It was February. about two months ago. It was about two. It was February, yes. Yeah. So you guys That's were talking right. about clothing. We, we covered this piece. So she wrote, I'm a real estate agent. You can't tell me what to wear on the job back in February. Lisa and I covered it. She wrote a reaction to that last week in Inman Nicole. This yes. is before she saw the the cover, the story covering bare minimum Monday. So she's right. the writer of You Can't Tell Me What to Wear on Inman. Right. And she wrote this, you know, covered this TikTok trend, uh, bare minimum Mondays, which Inman on that phone call said was their best article of the week last week. I said, Yeah, because when you have people like us talking, talking about, about it, it, doing clips on Instagram, it pushes more traffic there. So you should be an open platform and not shutting people off if you want to get more eyeballs and you everybody yeah, wins. I, mean, I guess to clarify though, again, you didn't you didn't mean it as being like poorly written. You no, just I thought it was a meant, great yes. written piece. So like for them to take it. offense, it was just about the topic. Like I can't even like you just were saying you can't even bring, believe someone's bringing light to this topic. Like I thought Rachel is I think Rachel is doing a great job yes. of selecting I just want to clarify cuz again it sounded like maybe they were taking it in that like cuz you're saying it was the worst written piece but you didn't mean 
grammatically. Correct. I think yeah. Rachel's doing a great job picking articles that are going to Clearly. She's been talking about twice debate. already. Yeah, I mean, we've been talking about lots of her topics. Absolutely. And so, you know, she's doing a great job. What I'm saying is the trend is the worst piece, you know, it's the it's the worst thing ever published right. in Inman for a trend. And so um but this is what I mean by, you know, when you have a scarcity mindset of you know, basically trying to like how agents had a scarcity mindset of we want to hold the MLS. What happened? Zillow has, has made things better for every, every consumer. When right. you have this scarcity mindset, if we want to hold everything back and you and then you, you're going to miss out on the opportunities last like last week in men where we're actually bringing traffic to you because we'll do less and less of this now. Um, now that not, now that we're going to move in this direction together. Right. And, and it'll be real deal. And and others that actually I'm, I'm talking to Amir today from the real deal. So, well, so real maybe deal, we have to, and there's a little bit of a paywall there too, isn't there? Uh, they, all these guys, the only place where you don't have a paywall is now bam.com. Okay. So yeah. I want to get your thoughts on Rachel's um, response to the piece that you missed. And then I'm going to invite Rachel to the real word Ooh. to discuss both this piece and the bare minimum Monday piece. I think we got to have her on this of show. Of course. I think it would be great. Absolutely. So you can't tell an agent what to wear. I said, then you responded. That's the headline in this, in this piece. Okay. So she says, um, typically I let the comments and the ridiculousness roll off my shoulders, but when the comments dismiss real issues surrounding complicated problems, you can be sure I will have a few more things to say. What bothered me the most out of all the responses was that a contributor, Byron Lazine called me out by name on his weekly show the real word. I enjoy his show. I've been following it for years. And for the most part, it's fun and informative. I was a little taken aback that he would use my article, which was written to call attention to serious issues in our industry as an opportunity to write it off as a racket. And that I was trying to be the most woke person in the room by writing it. His co-host. So the one day Nicole's out. Thank God. My co-host of the day, Lisa <laughs> Chinati, seemed to get what I was talking about when she said she quit a brokerage that wanted her to wear skirts. That's what I'm talking about, Byron. The girls that get it, get it. So number one, Rachel, you're taking me completely out of context. When you say that I don't get it because of what Lisa said about quitting a brokerage wearing skirts, never in my life when I've talked on this topic, have I ever said girls, women, females should wear skirts, shorts, or anything of the sort. I want to be very clear on that. And very in fact, clear. on this real word, I talked about the dude wearing his hat backwards because he wants to wear whatever he wants into the listing appointment. And if you scroll all the way down to the bottom of written, she has a ton of comments on this one. If you scroll down to the bottom of her article, the bottom line, every human has a worth and a value. How you look at what you wear shouldn't impact the value. And if that statement makes you uncomfortable, then perhaps it's time to take a long look in the mirror and ask why. You are an independent contractor, wear what you want and work where you want. Brokers, I hope you took good notes. Well, agents, I hope you take good notes and don't take me out of context. What I've always said is if you want to wear your hat backwards and wear whatever you want going into the listing appointment, be comfortable with the value that you bring to the marketplace and the amount of deals that you're actually getting invited to do because you have to get invited to do these deals right. by home sellers and home buyers who actually want to work with you. It's going to reflect that. Okay. You're not going to be able to pick and choose who you want to work with. Cause some people are just going to say, I don't need a baseball wearing backwards hat person to come in. I've always said, don't be sloppy, be neat. You don't have to wear a suit. I've never said you, you have to wear a suit. What I've said is if you're 22 years old and you're going into somebody's home who's 60 and you want to age up a little bit, as a dude, it might be a good idea to wear a suit. But I, I've been completely taken out of context in here, and that's why I want to invite Rachel, because I've never said anything about females. Now, what her and what Lisa said on Knowledge Brokers is that sometimes the undertones might come off to women as if I'm saying something else. Um Again, I, I would just say that don't read into it. Yeah. What I'm saying is what I'm saying. 
Well, there's lots of brokerages, again, let's get off the skirts that don't even allow jeans. So like, again, skirt, jean, I mean, you can kind of intertwine. I mean, there's, there's, there are places that I would never work because I'm not allowed to wear. I like, I do wear jeans. I like to wear jeans. Did I wear jeans at the beginning of my career? No. Um, did I wear high heels at the beginning of my career? Yes. And pretty much for the exact same reason that you're saying. I mean, I was 29 years old. Again, I know that I wasn't 22, but I still felt super young. I had no freaking idea what I was doing. I was trying to get into an industry that, again, people were pretty established and also at a very different price, like um, age age frame too, you know, like the average age was still like between like 50 and 60. So it was, again, I was, I was, you, you, I was trying to step up, but um, yeah, again, I, 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 I've, I mean, if you come here, I don't think one person here wears a, wears a skirt. So um, I mean, again, do we dress code on our team? There's zero dress code. No, I mean, we, we encourage everybody to not be sloppy, but I mean, I'll be the first person to walk in here with a hoodie on for sure, but I'm also not necessarily meeting with a client that day either. So, I mean, um, here's where I'll say with Rachel, like I agree in freedom of choice on everything. Right. So on everything, I want to be clear on that. Like I agree with the right to choose on everything. So you can read between the lines there. What I mean like I think everything should be freedom of choice, including what you wear. But what I've always said is do not be disappointed when someone decides that you're not the right agent based on how you present themselves. The minute you walk in the door, the reality is you're going to be judged. And Rachel or any other piece that's written isn't going to be able to change that human nature. 52% right. of sellers in 2023 are boomers. Okay. If, if you walk into a boomer's house with a hat on backwards, I would imagine more than 50% of those 52% of boomers that are sellers are probably going to cross you off their list. You want to walk in as a dude with a t-shirt and a hat on backwards. You've just reduced your chances to provide the value that you know you can provide. And to me, that's just a stupid decision. Now, uh, we're going to have Rachel on and we're going to talk Hopefully about- Hopefully she'll come on. I think she we... will. Why wouldn't yeah. she? I don't know. I just hope she would. I just I think, I hope, I think hope between she... this and bare minimum Monday, we have a lot to talk about. Yeah. Okay. Um, and listen, I get it. Like people want to do what they want to do. I don't know where I've been taken out of con. I mean, she gets into this article talking about, not about me specifically, but that again, women are being told to cover up because it makes others uncomfortable. The comments would, would contradict that of like, um, what Christine Williams writes in the comments here. And yet there are real estate agents on social media, literally doing provocative wiggling on countertops. And, and so she writes, showing every inch of the skin or whatever, you know, like, and so everybody's going to have a, a little bit of a different opinion on this. I, I right. think that um, my stance has always been, I've never touched that side of it. So I don't know where, where I got dragged into the, you know, the skirts or the skin part of it. Uh, what I've always said is just consider your market, consider your audience and put yourself in the best position to win the listing. And it might not be wearing your old hockey t-shirt that you love because you just love the way it looks. It, it, it might be uh, putting a collar on and being respectful of the fact that you're being gifted a percentage of somebody's largest asset. Right. Rachel, I, I'm going to reach out to you and I'd love to have you on uh, next week's Real Word. I'm certain when she sees the bare minimum Monday piece, she'll have another reaction and I'd love to just have a conversation about all the topics, the, the dress sure. code, which, I mean, listen, if you want clicks in the real estate industry, every quarter, just, I said this on the Inman call yesterday, I said, every quarter, just write a, you guys do it. I mean, I've seen you guys do it for years. Every quarter, just write a dress code piece and clicks go through the roof because everybody has an opinion on it. Um, the bare minimum Monday thing was fascinating. So Rachel, I can't wait to, hopefully you'll come on and, and talk about both of these topics with Nicole and I next week. Love to have you. Let us know in the comments if you'd love Rachel to join the show. And I love, uh, keep writing great topics, Rachel, because maybe those will be the only topics that we cover on Inman <laughs> moving forward. Awesome. Good. Well, on that note.
on that note, uh, make Have sure that you day. click the link below. On that note, make sure you click the link below to join the BAM Mastermind. It'll be an amazing day. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. See you guys. Keep it real.